Kuzamula, I'm Juni Zook Selden. You're watching Bhutan This Week, our top stories this week. His Majesty the King grants audience to more than 700 IIM graduates. Hand, foot and mouth outbreaks reported in Wandihoda, Punaka and Shimga. And national women's team confident of winning SAF championship. His Majesty the King granted an audience to the 2019 to 2022 cohort graduating from the Royal Institute of Management on Wednesday. His Majesty also interacted with the 746 graduates as well as the RIM staff. In an informal conversation, His Majesty spoke about the challenges as a nation, concerns over issues faced today, and the way forward to secure a bright future for Bhutan. His Majesty said that Bhutan is going through a transformation because the country has a window of opportunity in which to forever change the course of future and ensure that the children inherit a successful nation. His Majesty's foremost concerns were about the economy and the prosperity of the people. While infrastructure and education are the foundations for building a strong future, His Majesty said these are the weaknesses at present. There's a great deal of work to be done to improve physical infrastructure and the regulatory environment before planning a more vibrant economy. These are challenges needed to be addressed to change the course of our future. Our advantage, His Majesty said, has always been that Bhutan enjoys a degree of goodwill and interest from the rest of the world. There's a quality about Bhutan and her people which has inspired others to see us as unique and special. This is a source of optimism and something we must build upon. In a world where knowledge and skills are increasingly becoming cheaper and more accessible, values are still precious. In such a world, our true advantage is being dependable, reliable and trustworthy. This must become our anchor, something we build as our national identity as Bhutanese. Yisha Gelson, BBS News. Tour operators in the country have mixed feelings about the new tourism policy. While they all agree that the policy will benefit the country in the long run, they fear the price they pay will be equally high. In the new tourism policy, with an increased sustainable development fee of 200 USD per person per night, tourists will no longer have to necessarily route through tour operators. The new tourism policy has the tour operators worried since tourists will no longer have to compulsorily come through them. However, they are hopeful that it will give them an opportunity to improve themselves. For a little time, maybe a year or two, uh, it may be a little difficult because we are moving into a new uh, policy. So in that regard, uh, it takes time. Every, anything that is new, it takes time to adjust. But uh, for long run, it's good. And uh, it's going to impact the tourism industry as a whole for a short span of time. But for longer period, for a decade or two or for, uh, further on, uh, it will be a good, good investment, I would say. Did you raise up SDF to 200 dollars with the immediate effect was a harsh uh, a blow on us. I don't see any scope of getting a good business, uh, especially the, you know, the Trisha hotels and the the small travel agents, but whatever it is, uh, this is like a new revolution is going on. Let's see what happens next. We all are prepared to face the challenge. Maybe I think in the long run for our country and uh, for younger generation can be a very good. But at the moment, uh, especially people like myself, uh, those who are operating at uh, small travel agencies, are uh, having a tough time, unprepared reform has happened for all of us actually. It was like a little bit surprise, shocked. Even I got 42 bags of care, my group from Poland got cancelled. We all are quite nervous with the new policy. Uh, I only hope that uh, uh, this new policy uh, would serve a uh, better purpose as uh, government uh, proposed to it. Now we have to strategize to, you know, uh, plan uh, for marketing, uh, you know, to. Uh, to, I mean, to target uh, for the high-end markets. According to the Tourism Council of Bhutan, operators continue to play an important role. The new system is expected to allow innovation and creativity, leading to a greater competition and vibrant industry. 
Since the operators will be determined by the services they provide, operators will have to upgrade their roles in providing high-end products and services. It's not that two robots not needed. Two robots play, still continue to play an important role. It's just that guests have more options to choose now in terms of planning their tour. They can plan themselves or they use tour operators. And tour operators uh, have also, a, uh, also an important Meanwhile, the TCB says it will continue to provide the platform for the operators to market their services. Kilitim for BBS News. The country's capital is getting smaller by the day. With more than 150,000 people living in Thimpu, the number of cars and permanent structures has been increasingly taking up much of the space. The situation is no different in the detention center of Thimpu Central Police Station. The center has more inmates than its capacity despite establishing two facilities at the North and South Police Stations. Located in the heart of the town, the detention center is a grim reminder of what will happen if you break the law. But the message seems to be failing since the facility is never short of guests. The facility can accommodate a little more than 60 inmates. However, there are close to 100 inmates cramped there as of Thursday. Due to restrictions, BBS could not take pictures of the overcrowded facility. The police claimed the daily intensive patrolling they conduct also contributed to high number of detainees at the facility. According to the police, they are closely monitoring the entertainment centers to keep crime under control in order to reduce the number of detainees in the future. Records with police show that the crime rates as a whole has decreased, but there is an increase in youth problems like battery and assault. Meanwhile, the Human Rights and Foreign Relations Committee of the National Assembly visited the detention center last year to study the situation of the center. As part of their parliamentary duty, the committee visits prison cells from time to time to understand the situation and provides recommendations to the government. During their visit, they found that the center was housing inmates beyond the given capacity and police are under stress. They said it's high time for the government to look into the matter and allocate a budget for separate detention. They recommended addressing the issues urgently. While opening another detention center might solve the overcrowding issues for some time, it is safe to say that this will not be the long-time solution. People coming into conflict with the law will keep on burdening the detention center so long as they are not educated to understand the law and the implications of breaking the law. With camera person Sheriff Gelson, famous Alden Singh, BBS News. The issue of overflowing manholes or sewer lines in and around Tempu Tomde is as old as the city itself. It has been under the media scanner for decades for being a cause of much inconvenience to the public. The issue is more apparent during the monsoon. This manhole opposite the KD Auto Car Wash overflowed during the recent downpour in the capital. It almost swamped the entire portion of the road, making it difficult for the motorists and pedestrians to use the road. Likewise, the road next to the taxi parking area in main town was flooded a few days ago. The parking lot near the Centenary Farmers Market mirrored similar issue. According to the residents, such sighting not only look filthy but also produce unpleasant smell. It's difficult for people to get inside their cars. While getting outside of the cars, the shoes get dirty as well. So it would be great if the authorities could look into this. It's very troublesome. There should either be proper drainage or a way to let this water go. During rainfall, the places here are filled with rainwater since there are a lot of bottles here. Some young drivers speed drives, splashing dirty water all over us, whereas the adults are a little mindful, so it bothers us a lot. After my shop got flooded with rainwater, all the clothes and other items got wet and damaged. 
so I had to relocate my shop. The situation still hasn't changed much today. It's the same. Some residents said overflowing of sewer lines can pose health risk to the public. And amid pandemic, ensuring clean surroundings are a must. Such accumulation of dirty water might become a breeding area for mosquitoes, which will cause malaria and other diseases. Since a lot of people go from here, it's also an eyesore for them. The Thimbu Tomde in its email response said, overflowing of sewer lines occur due to the irresponsibility of the residents. They said releasing rainwater from the building's gutter to the sewer tank and flushing sanitary paths, cloth pieces, kitchen waste and debris clog the main sewer pipe. This causes the manholes to overflow, especially during the monsoon. However, Thimpu Tomde office is now adamant about fixing the problem. In a telephone interview with BBS, Thompen Ugin Doji said they have notified the building owners to avoid draining rainwater from the gutter to the sewer system. Thompe said they will inspect the buildings after a month or so and impose fines to those who do not comply with the notification. Thompen also shared plans of replacing sewer lines along the Northern Lam since they were constructed more than 30 years ago. More than 100,000 people reside in Thimpo Thomde. Gyalzong Chodin, BBS News. More people in the capital are using the city bus service amid the growing number of vehicles and traffic congestion. The fluctuation in fuel prices with more hikes than drops and the availability of city buses throughout the day have encouraged more people to use the city bus services. According to the city bus service, the number of city bus users has increased by two folds. It is a common sight to see people waiting in groups at designated bus stops like here. And it is also common to see passengers hopping in to grab a seat before it is taken. The buses are crowded with people, especially in the morning and evening hours. The regular service is welcomed by people like 12-year-old Tring Yudin. Studying at Jigme Losal Primary School, she is amongst many passengers who use the city bus service on a regular basis. She has just finished her midterm exam and as usual she is going home to Luntepu by bus. Taxi fares are expensive, so I feel the city bus is very helpful. My parents have also availed me of smart cards, so it's very convenient for me. There are more than 60 buses in the capital today. Due to this, the new route system has been introduced whereby the service is available from 7 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. through various routes. There is a vast difference between taxi and city bus. City buses are helpful in every aspect for us. City bus fare is about four to five times cheaper than taxi fare, so it's helpful to low-wage income earners like us. With the government providing city buses and with an increase in fuel prices, I always travel by city bus. Also, the introduction of smart cards has attracted more people to use the service. Today, there are more than 7,000 people using the smart cards. We started the new route system and then uh, we have also started smart card system. And then we have Gakit Ride app. In the past, I think uh, as per some service that were carried out, we were fearing about 8,000 people. But now as per our record, we are fearing about 16,000 people a day. And also we have extended the uh, working hours. The city bus service is currently focusing on giving priority lanes for the buses during peak hours, which starts from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. There will be a lane dedicated only for the buses. Well, uh, ambulance and fire engines can uh, use the lane. But apart from that, buses, uh, it's, it's for the buses. So when we have these dedicated lanes, uh, private lanes, 
uh, what will happen is that we will be reaching the destination on time. So this would uh, increase the reliability factor. The positivity surrounding city bus services does not end here. The country expects to have its first electric city bus in six months' time. This is expected to retain young riders like Sring Yudin to keep using the services besides attracting more users and contributing to a clean Bhutan vision. Kelsang Chodin, BBS News. An outbreak of the hand, foot and mouth disease has been reported in Wandipoda, Punaka and Shemga. The health ministry is advising people in the affected districts to be careful and follow hygienic practices. According to the Mayo Clinic, the disease is a mild, contagious viral infection in young children. About 50 children from the three districts were diagnosed with the disease last month. It was detected from students of ECCD centers in Shemgang and Wandifotang and Lobisa Loa Secondary School in Punakha. The hand, foot and mouth disease is characterized by sores in the mouth and rashes on the hands and feet. It usually begins with a mild fever and runny nose. In line with the recommendation from the Royal Center for Disease Control, the district health centers investigated the disease outbreak. It was discovered that almost all the cases had rashes on the palm, soles and buttocks, along with throat ulcers and mild fever. However, none of them developed complications. The health ministry has advised the affected children and others to wash hands regularly and wear face masks to prevent the disease. Children and adults are also advised to avoid close contacts with those having the contagious viral infection, cover mouth and nose while coughing, and disinfect frequently touched objects. As per the health ministry, the virus which causes the hand, foot and mouth disease mainly spreads through saliva and stool. Samtan Dolker, BBS News. The construction of the 65-bedded Gilson Jitsuntema Mother and Child Hospital in Monger is finally gaining momentum. Works began towards the end of last year, which was a delay of about five months due to the pandemic. The Mother and Child Hospital is expected to be ready by July of 2025. The groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of the hospital was held in June of last year. The construction was planned to start two months later in August. However, due to the COVID pandemic, works could not begin. But works are now gaining pace at the hospital site, which is located a few kilometers away from Monger town. In a virtual interview, the health minister updated that the construction of the hospital is going smoothly. They carry recently they go to where I think uh, you are already in Mongar. I'm getting pictures from Mongar. Yeah. Uh, she, Tony, yeah. site plan work. The Kara Gutu is a Shunibe. We have already stationed uh, the engineering team, should already be there. La. Yeah. This is Kara Ubi Galera. She is so Halam to Kara Besanola. So work is going as planned. Once the hospital structure is complete, it will offer sub-specialty services in pediatrics and gynecology covering six eastern districts. Currently, Mongar Regional Referral Hospital delivers about 1,000 babies in a year, the highest among the six hospitals in the east. The upcoming mother and child hospital will handle the child delivery cases with improved facilities and services. Doctor Na Hip Shimli the Timber Joe Mogga Bekata no Subajonism Jidula. Pediatrician yeah, Pituchi Beshimle the time twelve. Since there's only one pediatrician, he comes at around twelve or one PM. So it is challenging for us to wait for him. If a child is referred to Thimpu, it is far away from the east and moreover the road is not good during summer. So it will be good to have a separate mother and child hospital in Mongar. Nalo Aida Alugiminka Sapji go to watch in Lishimoni Bensinibinla. The mother and child hospital will also be the first ever energy efficient hospital in the country. It has been constructed at a cost of more than 935 million newton. For Sonam Tsring in Mongar, this is Pemal Hadin, BBS News. A high school female student in Hinsi died after being bitten by a snake. 
The incident took place at around 8.30 p.m. on 5th August. The girl had gone out of her dormitory towards the basketball court to study as the midterm exams were going on. Sources said the girl was fine when she was referred at the district hospital and was kept there under observation. However, her condition started to worsen towards the early morning hours. She died while on the way to the regional referral hospital in Monger. Three years ago, residents of Shumar Gyog in Pemagatsil found an opportunity to run a community business to enhance their livelihood. They formed a private company that caters hiring services for the, for the SMCL's mining works at Kotakpa. As it is a profitable business, now other Gyogs also want to join the company. The local leaders raised this during the Zongkak Sogdu. Rangjung Nurbu Gongfil Private Limited is a company the residents of Shumar Gyog formed in 2019 when SMCL took over gypsum mining works at Kotakpa. Close to 2,000 individuals from Shumar Gyog contributed to more than 30 million to form the company. They have also taken a loan of over 20 million item. The company lends earth moving machines to the mining corporation. They have eight excavators and four tipper trucks, and the machines earn them at least 4.5 million item every month. They use the earnings to run the company and repay the loan. The company pays 400,000 item every month in loan repayment. Now, residents of other Georgs also want to be members of the company. <laughs> According to the GUPS, initially, the SMCL and community in Pemagatsil decided to let Shumar Gyog form the company for two years, that is until the SMCL's contract expires. The GUPS said it is almost three years now and that the opportunity should be given to other Gyogs as well. We are all aware that the constitution states that every citizen has the right over the country's natural resources. Nanong residents are also citizens of the country. So the authorities should now look at how long it has been since the company was formed. After prolonged deliberation, the Dongkok Tokdu chairperson said neither the House nor the SMCL branch office can decide on the matter. He suggested that the House should write a letter to the relevant authorities, including the SMCL head office and the Economic Affairs Ministry. <laughs> Now, from the Zongkok Tokdu, we will submit a letter to the relevant agencies and authorities stating the demands and wishes of the people of the other Gyogs. The members unanimously supported the resolution. For Tiledochi in Pemagatsil, Samten Dolker for BBS News. Last week, a landslide killed two people and damaged two houses at Benpurong village in Sondrup Jonkar. The incident has become a nightmare for those residing in the nearby area. Today, some eight families have started living in temporary shelters away from the area which is prone to landslide. People allege that the road construction work above their village is causing the landslide. <laughs> These families have been spending the last seven nights in temporary shelters like this one. The villagers moved to safer locations after a landslide buried a woman and her daughter along with their house last Monday. They claim that the landslide occurred after a heavy rainfall washed away debris from the construction site. I think the landslide occurred due to the ongoing road construction works above our village. I don't have anything, not even clothes. The recent landslide has damaged my house. Currently, my neighbors are helping me. The landslide occurred due to the debris at the construction site. Now I think the local leaders should look into it and come up with necessary measures. According to the Wangfu Gyog administration, for now the road construction has been stopped as it poses risk. The Gyog plans to resume works after a month. 
Even so, the residents have no other options than to live in the temporary shelters until the monsoon ends. For Kilewanchu in Samrup Jonka, Tsringzam, BBS News. The national women's football team is looking forward to winning their first ever South Asian Football Federation Women's Championship next month. The team stated that they have been training hard over the past two months and are ready and confident that they will do well. Hosted by Nepal, Bhutan will be participating in the Seven Nation International Championship after over two years. <laughs> These women train six days a week. They gather at the Changjiji football field at 6 p.m. every day. As a physically intense sport that requires the player to be at peak for 90 minutes, the girls are drilled strictly and in all facets. The girls are also determined to give their best due to the bitter experience they had in the past. We lost to Nepal by three goals in the past. We also played against Sri Lanka and lost the away match but won the home game in the past. We are confident against Sri Lanka and we will equally give our best against Nepal. The sense of accountability to the team is one of the main factors that will fuel everyone to perform their best. Only by working together and understanding each other can they perform best as a team. And for the SAF championship, this factor could be one of the crucial approaches. Many of us grew up playing football from a very young age, so we have become like sisters who help and support each other at all times. We are preparing very well. Meanwhile, with the guidance and training from the new South Korean coach, the girls are filled with energy, excitement and confidence. Our current coach played for the World Cup in the past, so she knows how to read a player because of her experience. She is really intensifying our mental approach, which is boosting the confidence in the team. I am very much positive and I hope that we win. She also added that this could be the time for Bhutan to win the 13-day South Championship, which begins on 6th of next month. The women's national team first played the soft championship in 2010 and never won the title once. The stakes are high and rewarding, but the girls will have to contest with grit. Tring Dandup, BBS News. That brings us to the end of Bhutan this week. I'm Chunisuk Selden. Thank you for watching. Take care and goodbye.